I think Darren just grew an extra six inches there. No, <laughs> well, I... <laughs> here, here we are. We're standing in this waterway through the field. And, and you know, as tracks go through the field, uh, they tend to compact in areas where it's wet. So you drive through a, a low, wet area, and Brian stands in a tire track that's down, and I stand on the normal level of the ground. And I'm normally about three or four inches taller than Brian. <laughs> yeah, I don't Today think I'm so. like eight inches tall. <laughs> I look like I'm six, eight with my afro. Yeah, Darren's here. one inch taller than me. And <laughs> one, <yeah. laughs> at least two. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we're standing down here in this low part of the field because this is where we're going to run some drain tile here in just a few days. The important thing that we wanted to stress to you is not every single acre of a field needs to have drain tile running through it. Where we farm, we have a lot of rolling hills and it really works out pretty well to tile through some of the low grounds. And what we'll typically do is tile on either side of a waterway, just like the one we're standing in. So we're gonna tile back here, probably three, four, five feet behind us and probably 20 feet ahead of us there. We'll run tile lines on each side of this waterway so it will catch that water as it's running down the hill. And one of the big questions I've had about tile over the years is, Guys will say, well, why don't we just lay one line of tile right down the center of the waterway? But here's the thing, this waterway is here for a purpose. We have lots of hills here, and if we get a four inch rain sometime, we want this waterway to catch that water, kind of slow things down, catch any dirt that we may have, have uh, had come off another field or something like that. And if we had laid that tile right down the center of this thing, we could actually wash that out and it could be a problem in the future. So that's not what we want to have happen with drain tile. We want to be on each side of the waterway rather than right down the center. Well, over the last 130 years that this ground has been farmed, there's been some erosion and these waterways have really helped save things. But the other thing that could help save your soil from erosion is allowing that water to move into the soil. With drainage tile, the great thing about it is when you get those rains, the soil can soak up a lot of that rain. It doesn't stay there saturated with no place for the water to go. It's allowing the excess water to get out of the way, move down the stream. That way, when you do get a rainfall event, you can make more use of it. Now, one of the things we mentioned earlier in the show is with this drain tile, you may not think you can do it in every place. So we get a lot of questions. Probably the number one question we get is, guys will say, well, I don't know if I'll even get approved to do drain tile. The very first step you've got to take if you want tiling done is you have to have the NRCS come out and they have to certify that it is not a wetland that you're trying to tile. So as long as you're not trying to drain ponds or anything like that, you want to make sure you're farming all your ground. On our farm, we will not take prevented planting acres. We would rather plant the crop a little late just to make sure that in the future, if we ever do want to tile some ground, we've always planted that ground. Sure, it may be a little late sometimes, but you know that's just the way it goes. It's not a wetland. We can prove that, look, we farmed this for 10, 20 years, whatever the case, there's never a problem. It just gets a little bit wet in the spring. That's all we're trying to do with tile. We're not trying to drain any wetlands. We just want to make sure we have decent drainage where we've been farming for years and years. Now, if you want to get some tiling done, it's important to talk to your neighbors downstream because they need to understand why you're doing what you're doing. In some parts of the country, this is no big deal because drainage tile's been done forever and you say, oh, I'm going to fix my tile up and the guys downstream say, oh, okay, yeah, that'd be good. I can see you got a problem over there. No problem. In other parts of the country, like where we're at, there hasn't been much drainage tile done over the years. So guess what? You get to be an educator. You get to talk about drainage tile with your neighbors, explain what's going on, and get them to understand that, hey, there's some benefits too. For us on our farm, as we're talking to our neighbors, a lot of the neighbors are saying, man, I've always wanted to tile too. I, I wish I could tile. Maybe you can keep going right through my field too. Well, not only that, but a lot of people haven't done tile because they didn't think they could get it done. When you start talking about South Dakota and North Dakota, areas where there are potholes, there are some wetlands, people get all concerned that, oh, I can't tile anything. You know what? You can tile a lot of things. Yeah. Yes, you can't tile a wetland, but you can tile around some of your areas that have wetlands. You can tile any of your fields that are certified as non-wetlands, as long as you're getting some of your neighbors to kind of go along with this wherever that water would happen to run. And you know what I found? I also had a lot of people say, oh, you won't be able to get all the neighbors to get along with you and everything in this tiling project. We have, because if I have a problem, they have a problem too, because right now my water is seeping below ground into their field making their field kind of a wet hole to begin with. So if we can get all of our water going and then move that all through their field, everything works out pretty good. Well, the big challenge is having some place to drain this water too, because not everybody's blessed with rolling hills like we've got. Yeah. So it's pretty obvious where the streams are gonna be at and this kind of thing. If you've got some flat ground or maybe you're right next to a road and you say, you know what, it's lower on the other side of the road 
than my field. It's My field's high. I'm holding water back. How can I get around some of these things? Well, yeah, but you can tile underneath the road. You can go right in through their culvert. You just have to work with whoever it is, the county, the state, the township. And in many cases, we've had great luck just working with those people because if, let's say, the road was holding up water, what's going to happen to the road long term? I mean, I can tell you there's a spot just a mile down the road where a neighbor has water that's trying to get past the road, the road is holding it up, and now the road is just a disaster because of that water that's been seeping under the road for years. Well, if that ground was all tiled, it ran through the culvert and got over into our field, there wouldn't be that problem and the road would be fine. So you just have to always look at it from the other person's point of view. Don't just look at, well, I'm going to gain this if I do this thing over here. Just say, look, if we do this and we work together, here's the end benefit for you as well. So if somebody gets fired up for tiling right now, how quickly can they get this job done? Well, it may take some time. It just depends on how quickly your NRCS can get out. That's really the holdup. So it might be a few days. It might be a few months. You're just going to have to talk to your local NRCS person. But the main thing is to just get going on it right away. And I'll tell you too, a lot of the tilers, they are busy. There's more tiling being done now than just about any time in the last 10 years, I think. And so on our farm, we bought our own tile plow. And the reason why we got the plow that we did, we don't want lasers and all that stuff that takes forever to get things done. And then you still don't know if you did everything right. We got a new system from a company called Soil Max. And the reason why we got the system, the plow is not a whole lot different than anything else you could buy. It's the guidance system. It runs off GPS and a slope sensor. So all we have to do is drive the slope that we're going to tile. We come back, we drop the plow in the ground, the computer controls the plow, we lay the tile in. It's a great deal. It's much faster. <laughs> uh, well, seriously, I mean, I, I really think that just ourselves with a front wheel assist tractor and this three point hitch tile plow, we can lay two or if not even three miles of tile on a very good day. Well, that is pretty quick. And if you're looking at doing some drainage tile on your farm and you've got some questions, uh, we're sure more than happy to take some questions. I'm, I'm sure you've probably got some local resources too with drainage tile, but this is a big topic. The return on investment is great. It can make you more money on your farm for the next 20 years or longer. So do take a look at improving drainage on your farm. Well, another thing that you might want to improve on your farm is weed control, especially if you've got our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop it later in the show.